There are two ways to conquer and enslave a country. One is by the sword, the other is by debt. The national debt, deficit, and debt ceiling. Three very different interconnected terms, three terms we all should know. At the time we are filming this video, the deficit is $439 billion. The debt is $18.8 trillion. And Congress is once again gridlocked in another struggle over raising the debt ceiling. The security and stability of the nation is largely dependent on our financial status. Whether or not the United States of America is actually solvent makes a difference. The national debt is fast approaching $19 trillion. With the 2016 presidential election approaching, there is opportunity for change. The campaign leading up to the presidential election have and will continue to span a spectrum of topics. It is the national debt, however, that deserves heightened focus. The current direction of the national debt will be monumental in determining the future of America. The debt is the combined total of all money the United States government owes itself, other nations, and other entities. The debt is an ultimate result of compiling successive federal budget deficits, the amount of money the United States spends but does not take in through taxes. The United States Congress also puts limits on the amount the United States can borrow. This is called the debt ceiling, and must be raised each time the government reaches a set amount of debt, gridlocking Congress and threatening default on American loans. We're spending a lot more money than we're taking in as a government. Uh, it's been driven by a couple of factors. Back in the 2009-2010 period when it really exploded, when we were running trillion dollar deficits, it was a function of the economic recession that occurred as a result of the banking crisis. National debt is, a, is in, in the long term, is unsustainable. Uh, and at some point, this country will have to deal with it, both the President and the Congress. If I was going to the doctor, and the doctor said to me, how bad is the national debt on a scale of one to 10, just like you say, a pain number to the doctor, I would say the national debt is a nine. If it gets much worse, they're gonna, they're gonna be forced to cut. They're gonna have to cut something. I mean, no matter who the president is in the 2016 election cycle. People, you know, we hear about the national debt, 18 and a half to 19 trillion dollars. I mean, we can say those numbers, but do we understand what they mean? Just back it up to 18 trillion. To pay off 18 trillion dollars at a rate of 10 million dollars a day, 365 days a, a year, it would take you more than 5,000 years. And that's what we are putting on the backs of our young people. The Federal Reserve has kept interest rates at near zero for a pretty long time. Uh, and once interest rates start popping up and the Federal Reserve moves to a more normal interest rate policy, that's when the full cost of the national debt will be realized. Uh, and, uh, and that means the debt service payments that we, the taxpayers, will be paying will explode. And that will crowd out spending for a lot of other important programs and services. And I think that will force us at, at some point to engage in what we would call a serious fiscal reform. That is both a major tax reform and a reform of what we call our entitlement or mandatory programs. Um, you know, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Their interest rates, their mortgage rates, their ability to get a job, keep a job. long-term ramifications on social issues. We have issues of updates for national parks, our military, our economics, our gross domestic product. Healthcare law, it will have to be some reform. and. Uh, I don't think it's going to occur until the interest rates start going up a bit. And, and all in all, that. it is clear that the debt was created by large deficit spending by both the President and Congress, and that in order to fix it, cuts in taxes must be implemented. We also need to clearly define when it is right to have deficit spending into the future. Whether that is in times of conflict or economic downturn needs to be decided by us, the nation, if we do not want this problem to repeat itself. The solutions are not always clear. But we need to have this discussion before we hit our limit. Our creating a more solvent America needs to be a priority. Our current system is simply unsustainable.